Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to another episode of Action and Inertia, a research podcast where each week we invite our guests to share their unique and valuable perspectives about human behavior in response to change with us. I am your host, Kimberly Logan, and today we are so excited and honored to have with us Patrice Martin. Um, Patrice, if you would introduce yourself to everyone, let us know what you're passionate about and where your subject matter ex expertise lie. Surely. Hi, I'm uh, Patrice Martin, as uh, Kimberly Logan has said, and I am, um, I would say by profession, by trade, I consider myself a grants manager. Um, and in my personal life, I also consider myself a um, a novice artist in some areas and a um but an advocate for an um for the adoptee and foster care community. So I um spend time, you know, volunteering in that area. And um during the day I spend time being a subject matter expert in the grants management and um have over 20 plus years in grants and nonprofit management. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Welcome again. Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Every time I'm excited. Um, so just to really quickly reiterate for the audience, the goal of the podcast is twofold. One, to inspire at least one person to actively lean into change. And two, to gather information to create a database that can be used as a toolkit for folks experiencing change. So without further ado, Patrice, question number one, okay. uh, in the face of change, what motivates a person to choosing or to action or and or inertia? Certainly. Um, I thought a bit of, um, about, you know, the, the title of your of your of this podcast. And I think um, one of the main motivators that I've seen personally and with others that I've talked to is um, just not wanting to feel pain or anxiety um, that inaction brings. You know, one of the motivators for change is certainly that you just get, it's almost like a pushing to the edge that if I don't make a change here, you know, nothing's gonna change for me or for um, others. And so I am propelled into that because I'm just sick and tired of what inaction might bring. Um, and so I think that that's a lot. I think two people, um, and I know myself as well, you know, are also motivated um, in a good way as well by the promise of something. Mm. You know, they're motivated by, if I actually do take this step, um, this actually could change. And this could actually change um, for the better. I'm in the process of walking through that with a, somebody close to me that's starting a business. And mm -hmm. I know that this person's like, this actually works. <laughs> you know, this is, and, and it's, they're really motivated by um, the promise of what could be. Mm. So I think that that's um, one of, the things um that something could be greater mm. or something can just be different even if you don't get more it's just mm -hmm. different and you may want that difference yeah. um yeah. in your life um i think sometimes definitely money can be a motivator oh. you know to change people <laughs> that that's just just a real um you know they may need to change your economic si situation or want to change the economic situation for others. Yeah. You know, that it could be that you have enough, but you know, there's a longer view um, in mind. And then um, also I think people are motivated too by the beauty of a new experience. Like it's just like when you can kind of what I um I listened to another podcast um by um a doctor named Kurt Thompson, and he talks about focusing, centering yourself, you know, on beauty in life and, and things like that. And, you know, you can really be motivated by the beauty of a new experience and, and actually, you know, 
I try to look for that day to day and in small pieces, you know, it was just having a conversation with a friend today about something kind of challenging, but I was like, there's an opportunity here. Yeah. There's an opportunity. This is a challenge. Ooh, this one is big. Mm -hmm. But um if if we handle this right, yeah, there's there's beauty in it. There's, you know, so there's um yeah. And then, you know, people are also motivated by the thought of an open door. You know, this is an open door again, that opportunity thought um, you know, to something new. Yeah. That they haven't done. So that the freshness, I think there's a freshness um to being motivated. Um motivated by that. Um yeah. now prospect. You know, yeah. Yeah, by prospect. I love that. I love that. It's um you know, and I think a part of what I've really enjoyed so far about uh, recording these interviews is really how unique every person's mm -hmm. perspective is. Um, and I'm just, I feel like I'm listening to you and I'm getting the warm and fuzzies because, you know, you're looking at action uh, from the lens of like vision and hope and opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. so much conversation about, you um, you know, like how fear might inhibit action sometimes or are sometimes motivated, but, you know, yeah. I think we all kind of have that experience. Like, you know, that's the, the foundation of the podcast is to kind of like create a community about the shared experience of change. Um, and it's just such a beautiful lens that I think you're putting on, you know, like that forward motion, that action uh, through that lens of like vision and hope and opportunity and beauty. Mm -hmm. Jen, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I honestly, uh, I, I can't say I've ever uh, considered it in those terms, mm -hmm. you know, so I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so leading into our second question then, did you, did you want to add anything else to, to the yeah okay so leading into our second question then um you know which is um which choice you know action or inertia is more beneficial to holistic wellness and thinking of holistic wellness in terms of looking at your life like a whole system uh, and mm -hmm. you kind of like clued into that too uh I think it even like expanded on that because in a couple of your um, anecdotes to the first response, you talked a lot about, you know, uh, how that might extend beyond yourself. So like how you might be motivated, you know, by your community or, you know, so uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which choice do you think lends itself uh, to a more holistic, holistically well uh, life? So this is something this I'm glad you asked this question because this is something that I've been I'm in no way shape or form a um a master or a you know <laughs> guru I don't sit in, in a room like a monk and contemplate this all day but um this is definitely a space that I have done a lot of thinking on probably in the last year or so mm -hmm. I'll say mostly um in the terms of um, looking at myself um, as it, as in these three parts, mind, body, and spirit, and how it all comes together as one, and how we are, um, how we, you know, the just the equality of all three. Yeah. Because there have been times where I'll just take um, where, you know, I focus more on, you know, maybe top heavy on the mind and I'm, you know, in school and I'm trying to do this yep. and I haven't fed that spirit part of me. And I've also let the body part of me go. And, you know, it's that. And then, you know, you have times where you're focus super on, you know, maybe even the spirit develop and the spirit and then the body and the mind have kind of gone and people like, wow, that you could really focus on. Yeah. Because you're created as I believe this is the, the three are, are in an equal to make you whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's holistic for me. That's how I okay. define that. 
if you're focusing on your mind, body, and spirit. So every day there's a concerted effort in some way, shape, or form for me to get that in. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the days that I do that, it's just better. Mm -hmm. So for example, for myself, um, you know, if, if the, the actions that, that are more focused holistically are, you know, if I, I'm really centering my faith around, I'm a Christian, but I'm centering my faith around practicing more of a contemplative life. So in that space, what you do is you practice contemplative prayer where you focus on maybe a word or, you know, something that you want to bring in a focus and bring that before um, God and, and, and focus on that and, and allow, you know, God to speak to you in that realm. And then, you know, my body, I get up in the morning and I get out there for my, this week, it's 38 minutes that I get my, you know, my intense walk on, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, so if I do that centering prayer and I do that, and then also for my mind, uh, recently I've embarked on that. I said that novice art part of me, um, I'm starting to, uh, creatively I've all, I'm into like calligraphy and hand lettering. So I'm starting to, you know, work with some ladies and get classes in that and, and, you know, work on that. So for my mind or pick up a new book or listen to a podcast yeah. that day, or, you know, um, or something that's going to better me and enrich me, you know, or read something fun. It, it, it doesn't always have to be something deep, but if I've engaged those three things, um, even in a conversation with a friend that, that, that is uplifting. If I've engaged those three things that day, that's a good day. Yeah. And I've noticed that, um, that that makes me whole. I also, um, I think that, you know, actions, when you talk about action and inertia, you know, and looking at that, I thought of, um, you know, three particular quotes and, and things is that, you know, a, a parked car doesn't move. Mm. So, you know, when you, when you got to take action, you got to, you still got to move it. You get, you right. got to, you know, you know, it's designed to be a car. <laughs> What'd you car. say? I said, it's designed to be a car, but it can't car until it's in motion. Right? Until it's in motion. Right. right. That's, that's what the purpose, and so that's the purpose, of, that's the the purpose of it to know. move. Right. Yeah. And then, um, you but, know, uh, we always talk about, you know, in the faith tradition, we look at faith without works is dead. But what that's saying is, is I haven't looked, I don't look at that um, with a condemning eye um, in the past, you know, I may have, but I look at that as almost a love letter to mm. say, to remind you that put your feet in the street this mm -hmm. morning, get up and take care of yourself, you know, yeah. um, whatever it is that you may yeah. need to take action on. Yeah. Um, and then the, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's really not only being, you know, just a hearer of what is around you and taking in all the good, you know, all day long, we have people posting wonderful quotes on Instagram and all these wonderful things we're hearing and we can listen to podcasts, but really trying to take like even something that I'm going to interact with you on making a point that these interactions that I have that are enriching to take something from them and put them in action. Don't just, you know, so be a doer of it mm. as well. Yeah. Because um, all of that goodness and all of that comes to you in, 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 in so many different ways. But if you see some, you could be at work and you really like the way somebody ran a meeting. I saw today, I interacted with something and I was like, ooh, this meeting is going a little south. Um, <laughs> and I could see where it went south because somebody didn't take control of something at the beginning. You can see in the good or, you know, in the, in the challenging still. But if you like something, somebody did take that, use yeah. it. Yeah. That's how you put that stuff in, in action and you keep yourself from getting stale. You know, a lot of people talk about being bored or they talk about, um, <laughs> you know, uh, allowing themselves to not be. Um, they're just stale, you know, things yeah. called bland in there. Well, you know, we have interactions with people all day, every day, and you can decide that you're going to 
um, utilize something good from those actions. So I think that's how you keep your mind active and keep your actions fresh. Keep, you know, mm -hmm. keep things. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. I love that. I hear you. Um, that is so, uh, full of, of wisdom, right? Like that, that idea that, uh, it, it just kind of makes me think like, you know, there's so little, uh, you know, maybe I can make an argument that the, there's not much in the external universe, maybe nothing in the external, er, external universe that I control, but everything in the internal universe will react to my thoughts, my words, my actions, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as someone who uh, really um, is kind of devoted to those concepts you introduced in the first question of beauty and hope mm -hmm. and um, op um, optimism, right? I feel like then I want to believe that the more that I can create that in my internal universe where I do have control, that it will affect without too much else the external, right? Like just the action of, like you're saying, kind of like that balancing mm -hmm. of what you what you have, you know, autonomy over. So I I I love that. I love all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, um, and so, okay, so the, this kind of leads beautifully into the, the last question, which is, uh, you know, what traits um, exist in those who consistently choose action? Or, uh, you know, as I kind of think about this, I wonder if I want to say what traits exist for those moments where you are consistently choosing action, right? Like, um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that, Patrice? Yeah, so... I thought, you know, I'm thinking of two things in uh, one. Well, there's actually three parts to this, but one of the first thing that I think of is, is that people that choose action, they remain curious. Mm. So, um, and they remain curious of the opportunity. So for instance, um, you know, you can literally remain curious and like, maybe you have to change your physical location about yeah. something like that. You, you know, you're making a change of a job or, you know, you're making a change of relocating, like physically relocating yourself. You're um, making a change of anything like that, that that's, that definitely, you know, propels you into action. You're, you're curious about something and you change, you know, you make that change because you're seeking, you know, something, but at the risk of not, wanting to always um feel like action because i thought about this that is um always forever moving action all also has an inner um emotional thing so you can choose you know action in the emotional space in the inside of what you're talking about some emotional growth so I'm experiencing some things recently where I haven't moved space at all. I haven't physically moved space at all. I haven't changed my, um, what do I want to say? I haven't changed my location or, you know, haven't stopped speaking to certain people, haven't changed, you know, a lot of people feel that. But what I have done is, is I've changed my um, mm -hmm. reaction to it. Mm -hmm. or I've changed how I'm thinking about it mm -hmm. or I'm changing the emphasis that I'm placing on it. Or you re, uh, realign your boundaries. Realign the boundaries. That's action. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to evaluate. Is it really? Cause you know, sometimes you like, oh, uh, you, you'll see all this stuff. Oh, you can't, you know, sometimes it means that you just got to um, you know, pull away from some people. Well, if right. you really practically think about it, sometimes sometimes there's just people that you can't, you know, you've had this annoying uncle for years and he ain't going nowhere and you're still going over so-and-so's house for Christmas. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. not, yeah. but you notice that this Christmas, you're not allowing that person mm. to rule your, they're just not, they're not going to do it. Yeah. 
So yeah. you put those other practices that we've talked about, you realize that you're an embodied you know, person and that you mind, body, and spirit, and that you're going to connect there. And that I'm going to let Christmas be the most beautiful. I'm going to lean into the beauty of what Christmas really in all of these other holidays or whatever. And despite that person being there, mm -hmm. when you're able to do that. Yeah. And it's safe to do that. So I'm, you know, that for me, I was thinking about that too, that there's emotional group. Then the second thing I was thinking about was, um, you know, a person that um, takes action also is, I'm going to say, you bet on yourself. Oh, you bet on you every, you know, you bet on you. You don't start off believing that you can't, you can't. So you start off believing that might be scared, but I'm going anyway. And I'm going to figure this out like I always do mm -hmm. get to the other side, even if it doesn't just go straight nice. Right. right. And it rarely does. It rarely and it rarely does. does. It's kind of like the Russian doll of change. <laughs> it's like... but, but that's, you're exactly right. But that's the... So that's the opposite of it, right? So there's something out here, and I don't want to, you know, get too much into the spirit world, but there's something that is is trying to prevent me from making or, you know, or myself. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm yeah. preventing myself from because that just is, you know, the facade of the safe of, you know, the safety of that. But you stay in that. And the outcome is it's never, it just it doesn't, it's not fruitful. It doesn't right. get you where you need to go. Yeah. So, um, cause even if some, even if you're on a journey and you're going somewhere and even if you don't end up where you thought you were going to end up, you're still going to learn something. Yeah. You're going to end up somewhere. You're going to end up somewhere. <laughs> so just put your feet in the street and go. Yeah. And, yeah. um, so that's, that's the, the one thing that I've seen consistently, you know, whether it be in business or, you know, even in, 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 um, some of my faith, you know, the stories in my faith tradition or whatever it is, I have seen that people have been empowered to quote unquote, bet on themselves. Mm. And that's, that's what they do. And then the last thing is, um, you know, you, another thing that propels action is, is this thought of this might have purpose beyond me. Mm. So how many times have we heard, you know, somebody taking action because, you know, this really might, this, I was thinking about others when I, I needed to do this, but I really was thinking like, again, back to the thing, if this thing works, there's some people beyond my lifetime that might even be changed. You know, we had ancestors that thought that way. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's literally the thought process about it. Like, you know, oh, you know, even in business, you know, this might actually grow this line of business to do X, Y, and Z, you know, yeah. this might actually make a change for someone, yeah. you know, that's beyond me, you know, yeah. this, and, it, and it doesn't even have to be, I'm not talking about like being Mother Teresa here and making like huge speaking, sweeping world life changes, but I believe that every single last one of us has that um, and can do something in the space, little space that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, and that's so like embedded in even uh, my purpose in creating this podcast or mm -hmm. um, my own curiosity about this topic. Like I've been thinking about this for years, you know, like, I studied this in grad school um, and, uh, you know, I really believe that, especially like in today's society and culture where there's so much uh, emphasis on power. I think nowadays in, in our sphere, we call it influence, you know, maybe like a couple decades ago, we called it power, right? Um, and there's so much uh, focus on that, right? Um, 
And I just believe that uh, where we go wrong is thinking that that comes from like stuff or, you know, mm-hmm. control over the external universe. Um, and I mean, I, you know, we don't even have to get into how that plays out because I think what, what I really believe is that uh, our power all the time exists based on our connectivity, right? Like how connected are we to each other? And so I'm like picking that up from what you're saying, you know, it's like, the whole reason that I personally am motivated to uh, expand and actualize myself is because I feel purpose to, so that that can ripple into the larger sphere, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Because why should only I benefit when we can benefit Mm -hmm. from the same kind of work just with a little shift in perspective, you know what I mean? So 100% agree with you. Um, I love that, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's a large part of what I hope this community that comes to the podcast will get out of this is um, feeling empowered just by knowing that somebody's talking about it, just by thinking about the questions yourself, just by talking about this among your friends or coworkers or colleagues or family members, you know, <clears throat> that like people will begin to be empowered <clears throat> excuse me and uh like ignite that in yourself you know yeah. that you can you you that you can feel that you can you can accomplish that because I think all of us uh I think to hu- to be human is to feel that connectivity it's just what is your relationship to it right now you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah so thank you so much. Did you have anything else you want to add? I just went on like a rant. I just want to, um, <laughs> yeah, I love what you just said. I took some of that in and I'm definitely um, absorbing all of that. And I just want to thank you for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you like the show and would like to support the research, um, like, share with your friends, um, follow us on Instagram. Definitely subscribe to us on YouTube and hit the notifications for new episodes every Wednesday where we ask the same three questions and continue to inspire folks to action and create this empowerment toolkit for all of us going through change. Patrice, thank you so, so, so much for your thank time you. and your insight. This has been such a beautiful conversation. Signing off. Bye, everybody. <laughs>